Hello guys and welcome to a brand new series where we cover all the spells in the game and rank them from best to worst or garbage as we have it here. So effectively this is going to be six episodes where we're going to go through every level of spells and ranking them from godlike to garbage tier. So how are we going to be doing this? Well we're going to be judging them on the following criteria. Power scaling, control, battlefield control damage and healing of the spell, the crowd control and the replaceability of the spell. I'm just going to keep the, the criteria here and let's get straight to it. If you want to support the channel, guys, please drop a like, drop a subscribe, drop a comment. Thank you. And let's get straight to it. Let's go. First of all, animal friendship. This is one of the most useless spells I have seen in the game. I haven't found any uses for it and it really doesn't make much of a difference in most of your animal encounters. If you have enough of a persuasion check, you're gonna be fine. This is garbage, don't pick it, it's a waste of a spell slot. Amor of Agathis. As you can see, it allows you to gain temporary hit points and deal cold dam damage to any creature that hits you. It scales very well, it can help boost your arm, your tankiness, so it's definitely one of the best options for defensive spells with temporary hit points it stays until long rest so you don't have to reapply it at all times or be worried about it you just do it at the start of the day and if something goes wrong then you can just cast it again for me it's a steer now arms of hadar is pretty cool the reason why arms of hadar is a good spell is because of this text right here prevents targets from using reactions so arms of hadar is an aoe spell around you which you can use to disengage while doing damage while it's not great damage and it's a strength save it's really important because you are preventing your enemies from using reactions so i would say this is one of the best spells for disengage not very not great for damage but again one of one pretty good option really then up next we have bane Bane is a pretty strong debuff. You give up to three creatures a 1d4 penalty, penalty to saving throws and attack rolls. You upcast it, you can target additional creatures. It's a pretty good debuff. It's a way to nerf the enemy's saving throws. But again, it's not great and it's not amazing. So definitely something to consider. Up next, we have Bless. Now, Bless is probably one of my favorite buffs in the game. It doesn't break the game but it really helps all the party members that you put Bless on, especially if they're making attack rolls or saving throws. I would definitely put it in the A tier, maybe maybe the S tier, but I would say it's more of an A tier buff. It doesn't break the game. It's not something that, it's something that does take concentration, but it's a very good buff to have on your party. Up next, we have Burning Hands. Burning Hands is a damage spell, it's an AoE spell, it can be used, so it's okay damage, it's pretty good damage. If the enemy makes a save, they still take damage, so it's a reliable way of finishing off enemies that are in melee to you. However, it is fire damage, and fire damage is very, it's very easily resisted in the game, so it goes in the B tier. Also, it doesn't scale very well. Up next we have Charm Person. Now, Charm Person, while it's a useful spell, there's also a country called Friends, which does the same thing. And during combat, you can do command or other spells that do that make an enemy your friend. So in my opinion, it's not a good spell. Don't use it, don't pick it, don't waste your spell slot on this. Don't waste your learned spell on this. It's not worth it. Up next, we have Chromatic Orb. Chromatic Orb, for me, is one of the best spells in the game. It gives you the option of going through a variety of elements or doing more damage with Thunder. You can exploit vulnerabilities of your enemies. You can create frost areas. Let me show you. As you can see, it's effectively one of the best and most versatile spells in the game. For me, it's really, really good can create areas of acid, poison, and of course, if you use lightning or cold, it does double damage on wet enemies. 
So for me, this is an S tier spell. It's so versatile, it does so much damage, it scales very well, it can crit, it can be twinned, it's really, really, really good. Up next, we have Color Spray, and as amazing as Chromatic Orb is, Color Spray is just bad. It blinds enemies with up to 33, up to 33 hit points, and it doesn't scale very well. It's okay at the first couple of levels of the game, but it's really bad after that. I'd rather just use a spell to kill the enemy instead of blinding them. Not great. Definitely don't recommend going for that one. For me, that's a bad spell. Garbaggio tier. Up next, we have Compelled Duel. Compelled Duel, as you can see right here, it forces an enemy to attack only you, giving it disadvantage against other targets. Now, using this on an enemy is a concentration. It takes a bonus action. And remember, this is a Paladin spell, right? So a Paladin using this on an enemy who will in turn hit the Paladin and then the Paladin will lose the concentration on the Compelled Duel. So what did you do with your turn? Basically, nothing. Nothing. I guess it would be useful in a scenario where you have to protect an ally and it's only one enemy or two enemies and then you want to grow the, draw the aggro on you. But the moment they hit you, you start the process of losing your concentration. So this is not one of the best options, nor one of the best um, abilities to use as a Paladin. In my opinion, it's pretty bad. Probably one of the best spells you can have as a Paladin. It's really useful when the AI uses this on you, but overall, not great. When the AI effectively uses Compelled Duel on you, it takes control of your character, right? And then your character is only attacking one enemy. But when you are doing it on the on the NPCs or the enemies, it doesn't really change much of how they behave. Up next, we have Command. Now, Command, command you command the foe to flee, approach, drop, gravel, or hold. Well, if you know, you can use Command to gravel, to force Commander Zalk to drop his weapon, and level one is when you will know you will be fighting Commander Zalk. So drop is amazing, you can get his weapon and then it's easier to beat the fight. You can also command enemies to gravel and this spell scales in incredibly well. And it can command more than one target per, per cast. So this is pretty legit. For me, this is a godlike tier spell because it can crowd control the entire enemy party. It has a big range when casting. So I can basically command everyone in the battlefield. It can be used on mind controlled allies to make sure that they don't hurt themselves. So pretty, pretty, pretty good of a spell. It can really carry encounters. It's not concentration. So it's just an amazing spell to have at all stages of the game. Up next, we have Create or Destroy Water, which I have to be honest, guys, this is one of my favorite spells in the game, and I'll show you why. So when you create or destroy water, apart from being able to upcast it to get higher level, big areas of water to rain on your allies or enemies, you also create this wet condition, which, let me pause, yep, it gives the enemy or whoever you cast this on, Lightning Vulnerability, Cold Vulnerability, and it also gives you Fire Resistance or whoever is in whoever is wet. So this, whenever you're fighting an enemy that's dealing a lot of fire damage, you can cast it on yourself. Or whenever you're fighting an enemy, you can cast it on, on themselves in an area, right? And you can cover a very big area for three turns where they will take double damage from Ray of Frost, they will take double damage from any cold or lightning spell. And there's a lot of cold and lightning spells in the game, which can be abused greatly. So the enemy doesn't get to make a save, the enemy just becomes wet. This is way too strong of a mechanic. It's godlike. It changes the way the game you, the way you play the game. Up next, we have Cure Wounds, and we cannot talk about Cure Wounds if we don't talk about Healing Word. So we're going to have to talk about both of them. So Cure Wounds effectively 
is a spell that heals for 1d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier, which is definitely not a bad heal. How and it does scale pretty well with spell slots 1d8 for every additional spell slot. However, the problem with this spell is that it takes your action to cast, and whenever it takes your action to cast something, it means that you're not using your action to attack your enemies and finish the encounter. So, it, for that reason, it's not great. However, if you compare it with Healing Word, which does 1d4 healing plus your spellcasting ability modifier and scales with d4 dice, Healing Word is so much better because it's a bonus action spell. And then you can use your action to, I don't know, do damage with your other spells. If your ally is downed and you want to bring them back up, then you can use Healing Word to bring them instantly back into combat so that they don't lose their turn. Whereas if you use your wounds, first of all, you have to go near them and you might not have enough movement to go near them. It might bring you in your healer into danger as well. However, Healing Word can be cast from a distance. So for me, Healing Word is so much better than Cure Wounds. You can also use them both together. And this is the only reason why Cure Wounds is staying relevant is because you can use your bonus action to heal with a Healing Word. And then you can use your action to heal more if, you, if it's needed. So, and it can't be twinned. So it's not horrible. It's pretty okay, but it's definitely not good enough to be a high tier spell. So it's C tier for me while the healing word spell is going for A tier or even S tier in my opinion. Up next we have Disguise Self. So Disguise Self first of all it's a ritual. So if you learn the spell then you can just keep casting it for free and change your self and your race. Why do I like Disguise Self? Well first of all Disguise Self Apart from giving you options, well, when people when pickpocketing vendors, right? So whenever you pickpocket vendors, you can disguise yourself so that you don't risk any negative interactions if you're caught. Or so you use it, you steal something, and then you transform back, and then you act like you've never, you don't know who that guy is that stole from them, and that's pretty cool. You can also use it whenever you are talking to somebody that you killed so that they don't recognize you as the person that killed them so that they will give you information that's pretty cool as well and also something that you can do is you can use it on items that specifically talk about buffs that are for certain races so for example Yankee also gain plus one bonus to intelligence wisdom and charisma saving throws right so right now i'm not a gift Yankee. So my save on intelligence is minus one and plus three to wisdom, okay? So if I use disguise self to disguise myself into a gift Yankee and I take it off and put it on again, I do benefit from the bonus. And then if I disguise myself again, I don't lose that bonus. So you can use it to get the racial buffs from certain items. And that's pretty cool. And that's pretty neat. And just for that reason, Disguise Self goes in the S tier. Up next, we have Dissonant Whispers. Now, Dissonant Whispers is a bad spell. It's a pretty good spell. It can frighten an enemy. It deals psychic damage. It's a wisdom saving throw, though. And while the enemy is frightened, they cannot move. And since the enemy cannot move, you can abuse your range and hit them with your ranged attacks. They have disadvantage on ability checks and ch attack rolls for two turns. It's not concentration, so you're going to have an enemy stuck, frightened, with hitting you with disadvantage, unable to move or take cover while you take cover, shoot them and then get, get back to cover. It's a very reliable way of abusing your enemy. So it's definitely a very strong spell. It's a level one spell. You can get it as a warlock or a bard. Pretty strong. Up next, we have Divine Favor. Divine Favor, your weapon attacks deal an additional one to four radiant damage. Well, this is not great 
early on because it's a paladin spell right so you already know how to use divine smite when you get this so you are effectively giving up 2d8 of smite damage to do 1d4 extra damage every turn for three turns so effectively if you don't have extra attack you're basically doing less damage than if you would have used a divine smite now if you do have extra attacks there's other things you want to be concentrating on like a magic weapon your other smite spells or even bless or shield shield of faith so for me this is a c tier ability just because of that maybe even d tier up next we have enhanced leap now enhanced leap is a ritual and it does have a really good benefit so you can cast this for free because it's a ritual so it doesn't take a spell slot to cast it and you can give it to your party members and they can jump really far and reach places where they wouldn't be normally able to reach and just because you're able to jump that far people use it for speed running the game because it's that much better at navigating areas and if you have a high strength it's even better this is an amazing spell it's for free you don't have to call, give anything to cast this so it's amazing i would definitely get it if i had the option up next we have ensnaring strike ensnaring strike is a ranger spell it can be used both for ranged or melee attacks the reason why i don't like ensnaring strike and hear me out on this one while it does do okay damage right and it does root the enemy so it has the same effect as this one as whisper this one whispers that we talked about earlier it is concentration and it's concentration spell for a ranger and ranger get the option get the options to do hunter's mark which deals additional damage for every attack that you make or wild growth which is a level 2 spell we're not going to talk about too much about it but those are much better spells for concentrating than snaring strike so just because of that reason unfortunately this is not a good spell it's competing with much better spells and therefore it's not as good as what it can as what other spells will give you so since we talked about hunter's mark hunter's mark will give you an extra on every attack that you land on the tar on the enemy target and if you have extra attack of course it applies on every attack that you're going to make and um, therefore it's a very good damage rider if you know what that is i'm going to be making a video about that at some point in the future to explain it better but it can be abused when playing the game and therefore i would definitely think this is a much better concentration spell for a ranger definitely a tier and since we're talking about hunter's mark let's also talk about hex these spells are very similar one it's in the warlock spell list while the other one is in the ranger spell list so what hex does that hunter's mark doesn't is that it does first of all necrotic damage which arguably can be better or worse in which act you are in on which enemy you're fighting because some enemies in act 2 have resistances to necrotic damage and some enemies in in act 3 and even act 1 have piercing damage resistances so it depends on who you're fighting right hex however will give you an additional option of hexing an enemy's ability check under one um ability so strength constitution intelligence wisdom charisma or dexterity so it does have a little bit of an advantage over hunter's mark however in my opinion hex does not get a massive advantage over hunter's mark so they are still in the same category it's not game breakingly stronger than hunter's mark so yes, in my opinion, Hex is in the same category. Up next, we have Entangle. So Entangle is a Druid spell. Which can create a Vine Surface, which whenever an enemy tries to walk on, he has it's considered as difficult terrain and they have to make saving throws or be ensnared and not be able to move 
Again, this is also concentration, but it's an AoE, so it's much better than the ensnaring strike, and it's a druid spell. So, in my opinion, this is pretty good for a control spell. So, while it's pretty good, I would put it in B tier. Fire effects will destroy the the, the area, and it doesn't do any damage, and it can. It's a very small area, which can enemies can easily dash around it and avoid it or jump over it according to their strength so while it's good it's not amazing so for me it's be maybe even c tier but definitely it's a little bit better than ensnaring strike so up next we have expeditious retreat now expeditious 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 retreat is a wizard spell the moment you cast it it will give you dash for one turn and you are going to be able to dash subsequently as a bonus action. What I don't like about this spell is that it's concentration. And because it's concentration and it, it lasts until long rest, so that's okay, that's not bad. But I would rather just be able to use Misty Step because that's going to also disengage from your enemies, right? If you use Misty Step, you can instantly teleport to another area so while it's okay at level one you don't have a lot of spell slots to be using and there's also boots that do the same effect without using up your concentration your concentration as a spellcaster is so important that you definitely don't want to be wasting it on expeditious retreat you can just use missy step which is a second level spell and you can cast that quite often up next we have fairy fire and if you don't know Fairy Fire, Fairy Fire is a spell that is also in the Wizard and the Druid spell list. Maybe, well actually, and even in some Cleric spell lists as well. So it's a common spell. Is that it has a huge area of effect which, you can, which can be used to debuff enemies or allies. You kind of want to use it on enemies. As you can see now, while this Jahira is concentrating, this character is debuffed from Fairy Fire. Incoming attacks against them have advantage and he cannot turn invisible, she or him. They also count as a light source. They are also, yeah, lit. So it's a pretty useful spell to give all of your allies advantage and it's an area of effect spell. It's one of the best control spells of the game, definitely S tier. Up next we have False Life, and while we talked about Armor of Agathys, False Life does a similar effect without reflecting damage on the enemies. So it's just purely worse, it's replaceable, greatly replaceable, therefore it goes in the D tier. If you have Armor of Agathys, you're never using this, it would even go in Carbaggio tier. If you don't, then sure it can be useful around the B tier, but in my opinion, it's just not worth taking it. Up next, we have Featherfall. Featherfall, first of all, is a ritual spell. And what do ritual spells do? They are free to be cast. So you can cast this for free. And you can also combine this with Enhanced Leap to jump without taking fall damage. Now, whenever you have Featherfall, Featherfall all, you have immunity to falling damage. And therefore, you can get high ground, you can jump really far, you can try ridiculous jumps, or you can even explore areas that you wouldn't otherwise be able to explore, like going to the Underdark or jumping from high ground. It's really a unique utility spell. I definitely recommend getting it. It definitely makes a difference in the game. I would put it in A tier because it's useful. It doesn't break the game but it can unlock you some unique areas and it's pretty cool to have it up next we have find familiar find familiar is also a ritual it allows you to summon between a cat crab frog rat raven or spider raven is really good out of all of these options because it can blind your enemies with its beak but alternatively you can also get scratch the the good boy right here also if you enjoy the video guys Drop a like and we are going to pet Scratch. But you can also summon Scratch in combat. Would you like the video? 
Perfect. Now we get to pet Scratch. Good boy. So you can summon Scratch, and if you're a Warlock, you can also get the Imp or the Quasit from the Spell Scroll as a Wizard. And if you're a Wizard, you can also get the Quasit from the Spell Scroll. If you're a Warlock, part of the chain, you also get the option of getting a Quasit or an Imp. I definitely recommend the Imp. And I do have a video about summons if you want to check that out. Talking about everything in detail. But yeah, Find Familiar is pretty good. It has a lot of options. The cat can be used to lure enemies. The Raven can be used to blind enemies. Very versatile. It gives you an extra ally. The only problem with it is it can be a little bit annoying if you're fighting for too long. So if you have to micromanage an additional creature in combat, which will stall your combat a little bit, but it's very useful and I definitely recommend having one. Up next, we have Fog Cloud. Now, why is Fog Cloud good? Well, first of all, Fog Cloud is replaceable. It's, it can be replaced by darkness. But what is good about it? First of all, it blocks enemy vision and it allows you to pickpocket vendors and they can't see you, right? So this is one very reliable way of pickpocketing. As additionally, during combat, you can cast it and then you can stay inside it and the enemies will not dare come inside. So you can stay inside, go out, walk out, heal your allies, and then walk back in. Pretty useful area of, and control spell. Definitely A tier on my list. Up next, we have Goodberry. Now, Goodberry is a druid spell it can be used to heal, to give you good berries, which can be used as a bonus action to gain some hit points on every turn. This is okay. They can also be used as camp supplies. So while the healing effect is not great, what is good about them is that you can use it. And if you think about it, if you have some druid spec in the party, you can almost get a free long rest without using any camp supplies. So. That saves you time from looting boxes and materials and gold uh, at the end of the day. So pretty useful. I definitely like it. Not too great, but definitely not bad. It has some uses. I like it, but it's it here for me. Up next, we have Grease. You're the one that I want. So Grease is a conjuration spell. It creates a surface of greasy terrain where enemies or allies can sleep and lose their turn. It can also be set aflamed, aflame, which will cause burning damage to anyone that steps over it. And that burning damage is not a lot, nor the explosion damage is a lot. So while it's a good spell for control of the battlefield, your enemies need to walk over in it and usually they will ignite it or jump over it or walk around it so while it's good it's definitely not amazing and there's better alternatives like having a create water the create water created and just casting ray of frost on it or on an enemy standing on it and then it's just gonna freeze the entire surface and it lasts for three turns and then you can just do it again without expanding a spell slot because you're using Ray of Frost. Yeah, pretty good. So, in my opinion, Chris goes in the respectable B tier. However, Create Water and Ice, ice Effects are much better. Up next, we have the Guiding Bolt. Now, Guiding Bolt is a spell, it's a cleric spell, it's a good cleric spell, it does quite a bit of damage, and additionally, it allows for the next attack roll against the target to have advantage, which is actually quite good, but it's only for one attack roll, guys. It's not for every attack roll, but it's good damage, and usually the enemy will die when you cast it on them, especially in the early game in Act 1. However, this is a very good spell to do damage and to do some additional effects. So definitely good 
but it doesn't scale as well. It only scales with 1d6 damage. And usually the enemy is dead by the time that you get the additional effect. Not an optimal spell for me. It goes in the C tier. I know it might be a little bit tough on it. It could also be considered B tier. I was actually thinking between the two of them. And similarly to Guiding Bolt, there's also Ray of Sickness, which instead of giving advantage on an attack against the enemy, it poisons them for two turns with a save. I think they are very similar in the effect of what they're doing. So here it is. It poisons the target. It does a little bit less damage and it's a con save. So this one also has a save. So arguably maybe Guiding Bolt is a little bit better and you could say that it's a B tier spell while this is a C tier spell. But they are very similar, so they are very good to compare against each other. However, if the Ray of Sickness poison goes through, the enemy on every attack roll that he does has this advantage, which is a very big debuff. So, this is how I would rank it. Up next, we have Hail of Thorns. Now, Hail of Thorns is a, pal is a ranger spell. It effectively uses your action and bonus action to shoot an arrow, which with a small area around it as AOE damage, it does upscale quite well with 1d10 extra damage. However, when you do go through with that, you forgo your extra attacks. So just because of that reason, this spell is only useful up until level 4, and after that it's pretty useless in my opinion, because you're giving up your extra attack and you're using your spell slots, so this is pretty bad after that but before that is okay so i'm putting it in d tier instead of garbaggio tier up next we have hellish rebuke now hellish rebuke is a very cool spell and the reason why i like it is because you can use your reaction to co to do damage and there's not a lot of ways you can do that in the game doing damage with a reaction it's only hellish rebuke and the cleric the Tempest Cleric unique ability doing 2d8 lightning or thunder damage. So it's a very unique way to boost your damage. Well, I guess also with rebuke, with repost, but and opportunity attacks, but we're talking about spells right now. So just because it can do damage with your reaction, it's very useful. I would definitely put it in the A tier. Up next we have he heroism or heroism. Um what I my problem with this spell is while it does prevent you from being frightened and gives you temporary HP, the temporary HP does not increase, but it also it instead affects additional creatures. But the main problem with this is that it takes turn turns and it's concentration. So this can be broken by getting hurt and you have to predict it before the fight or just use your action. So that means that you're wasting your action to get, get some temporary hit points that you wouldn't, that the enemy is going to do more damage. Every enemy does more than five damage. So it's pretty useless in my opinion. It's Garbaggio tier. Don't pick it. It's not worth it. Up next, we have Ice Knife. And the reason why I like Ice Knife or Ass Knife is that it does AoE damage. Yeah, it's not highly AoE. It doesn't scale very well. But for level 1, it's actually pretty good AoE damage. And it additionally creates an ice surface on which the enemies can sleep and lose their turn if they try to move away from. Also, if used with the Create Water effect, it will do double cold damage and freeze surfaces. So I like this. The moment you find, you can get it, it's pretty strong, but it scales off really bad, especially by the time that you get Sleet Storm or Fireball. This just doesn't compare. So for me, it's B tier. Effectively, it starts at A tier and it drops up even to D tier as the game progresses. Up next, we have Inflict Wounds. Inflict Wounds is a, it's, it's an okay spell. It's a Cleric spell. 
Clerics don't have really strong spells in the game and it does necrotic damage, which I guess can be really good with some items that you find down the line. It scales quite okay with 1d10, but it's a melee spell and I don't like melee spells. And because I don't like melee spells, it's going into C tier with Ray of Sickness. Effectively, it can be useful, but it's not that useful. Up next, we have Long Strider, and oh my god, this spell is amazing. It's a ritual, so it's free to cast. Effectively, what it does, it increases the movement speed of anyone you give it to. So, as you can see, this is not going to take a spell slot. But now I have 10 extra feet or 3 meters of movement speed, which I can use during combat. The quality of life is good. You're not going to have to use your actions or bonus actions to dash. And it's free and you can cast it on yourself, your allies, your summons, and effectively increase the quality of your life in the game. S tier. Up next, we have Mage Armor. Now, Mage Armor will increase your armor class to 13 plus your dexterity modifier instead of just 10 plus your dexterity modifier. Obviously, if you can wear heavy armor or if you have armor that you can be proficient in without having to be proficient in, like the Helldusk armor, let me show you right here. It says you are considered proficient with this armor while wearing it, therefore you're not suffering any negative effects on it, then you don't really need Mage armor, but when you do need it, it's very good, so it goes in the 8 here. If you don't need it, obviously it's garbage for you. It's really up to you. So, up next, we have one of my favorite spells in the game, Magic Missile. For me, Magic Missile, Magic Never Missile, <laughs> is one of the best spells in the game. It can do... the damage is not great by itself, right? It just throws some darts that can never miss, which is not bad, really, because it can be to break enemy illusions, to attack many targets at the same time, and land it for sure. However, what is really good about them is that it can be used to carry damage. So, damage riders is what they are called. And effectively, Spellmate Gloves are one of them, so instead of every 1d4, Every missile dealing 1d4, they deal 1d4 plus 1d8, and then if you have lightning charges, you also stack lightning charges, and then you can use the Kalos Glow Ring to do to get extra points of damage. You can use the Psychic Spark to get an additional missile. You can use Falara Loof to do an additional 1d4 damage. Um, effectively, there's a lot of items that boost magic missiles, which makes it the strongest spell in the game. And it can be, well, not the strongest, but it definitely does a lot of damage when used and let me showcase right here it's a level 2 spell slot and it dealt 50 damage right just a quick note guys since patch 4 came out um, the spellmate gloves no longer work with magic missile as you can see right here this came out on the 2nd of November of 2023 so effectively they did lose a little bit that the spell did lose a little bit of its power however there are still a lot of items that work really well with it like anything that does lightning charges the falara loof necklace rings etc so it's still a very good spell it's just that it's a little less stronger right now it's still it's still in a very good position also guys, if you enjoy the content, please drop a like, drop a subscribe, really appreciate it. And let's continue with our spell tier list. Up next, we have protection from, from evil and good. When it's good, it's good. Protect an ally against the attacks of aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Pretty good. It can be used against anti ethel It can be used against demons, elementals. It's quite useful, but it is concentration. And if you're not using it in a fight, then it's pretty bad, right? If you're not using, if you're not fighting any of the specified creatures. So it's situational. When you, when it's useful, it's good. So I would probably put it in A or B tier, but, but most of the time it's not going to be useful. So I'll just keep it in C tier. Up next, we have Sanctuary. And oh my god, Sanctuary is one of the best spells in the game. It's godlike, it's game-breaking. This game 
did us dirty by building sanctuary in this way. So the way you can use sanctuary is you can use an action to attack during combat, let's say, and then you can use sanctuary as a bonus action on yourself. And when you do that, no enemy will try to, to attack you. Your ally cannot be targeted until you attack or harm a creature. You can still take damage from area effect of effect spells. Yeah, and you effectively remain untargetable until this effect ends or that you try to harm another creature. So, why is this good? Because you can use your action to do a damaging spell and then you can use your bonus action to cast Sanctuary and you can effectively solo every encounter without being targeted because of how this mechanic works. This is way too strong to be in the game. It's probably the strongest spell in the game and definitely the strongest level 1 spell in the game. In the Usually in 5e there is a saving throw that needs to be done when an enemy wants to attack you. And if they fail it, they have to run away from you. Well, they have to redirect their attack. But in Baldur's Gate 3, they just can't attack you. Up next, we have Searing Smite. Now, Searing Smite is a concentration spell. Here it is. It deals an additional 1d6 damage on your next attack. And then while you're concentrating, the target takes 1d6 additional fire damage every turn. Nothing great. In my opinion, it's just better to do a Divine Smite and that's going to do 2d8 Radiant Damage. So it's definitely going to do more damage than Searing Damage would do in two turns. I guess if you concentrate for more than two turns, you can do a little bit more damage. But it's Fire Damage, it's easily resisted, and your enemy will be dead by then, in my opinion. So not very good D tier for me. Up next we have Shield. Shield is one of the best spells, defensive spells in the game. Can be used is in the Wizard and Sorcerer spell list. And it can be used as a reaction to increase your armor class by 5. And that 5 armor class boost is incredibly strong. It have a lot of builds just multi-class into one level of Wizard or Sorcerer just to get access to this spell. It can take your armor class from... Um, let's see, 21 and with a shield 23 to 28 and make it almost next to impossible for you to be hit. S tier for sure or even higher. Shield of Faith, A tier in my opinion. It's a spell that allows you to give plus two armor class to one ally in last until long rest, but it's concentration. It's not too great, but it's definitely good. And if you can stack it with shield as well, you can see that we are going over 30 armor class now. Up next we have sleep. Now sleep is very, very good when you get it. On level one, on level two, even on level three, even level four sleep is good. You can take enemies out of commission, just like that, with a snap of your fingers out of the fight. Yes, the, the drawback is that they can shove each other and get out of it, and that's something that actually can happen. But it's a pretty good spell. In my opinion, it's A tier. It does scale off. Though. So if you're level 5, just use Fireball. Don't use Sleep anymore. It becomes useless and obsolete after a while. It goes up to 24 hit points. Yes, as you can see, 24 hit points. If you upcast it, it gets 8 hit points per spell level. But if something has 32 hit points and you have... A fireball, it dies to the fireball. Up next, we have Speak with Animals. While this is a very cool effect and it's a unique effect, you can instead drink potions of animal speaking, in my opinion, and they don't cost spell slots. And therefore, this is one of the reasons why I don't like the spell, because it's a waste of a spell slot. Just drink a potion. There, There's a bunch of them in the game. You're gonna finish the game with extra speak with animals potions so just drink the potions and if you ever need them then you can just if you ever need to speak with animals and you don't have a potion then you can use this but yeah not not required tasha's hideous laughter very strong very good spell actually it's very good for crowd controller level one 
it cannot it doesn't gain any effects when upcasted though but if you what how did he die <laughs> this is funny Is it held as armor? How? How? How did that happen? Anyway. It's a pretty cool way to crowd control an enemy. It stays for turn turn on the ground laughing, but if you damage it, they can get a saving throw to against your spell save DC and then they lo yeah, then they stop laughing. So then the crowd control ends. So Pasha's hideous laughter. A good way to crowd control enemies, it doesn't scale very well. So in my opinion, while it's good, it's not as good as command in no way. Though I would put it in the A tier. There's definitely better options down the line, like hold person, which is permanent and stays every turn. However, this is a good crowd control spell for level one. Up next we have Thunderous Smite, and this is my go-to smite ability for Paladins. It does take a bonus action to cast, but as you can see right here, it doesn't require concentration. You just do it, and that's pretty good. It does take your bonus action, so if you had, have Great Weapon Master and have killed an enemy, you lose an attack. The damage compares with losing a Divine Smite. Of level one spell but definitely the best smite ability the best smite spell that you can have and it does start with divine smite so i definitely like it however if you're dual wielding or you are a great weapon master and you can get a kill then you can do an extra attack with your bonus action therefore most fighting styles circumvent this and it's not necessary in most of them, but if you are not going to kill the enemy, you can just knock them prone and get advantage on all subsequent attacks. Up next, we have the Thunder Wave, and Thunder Wave is a really, 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 really good way to push your enemies away. It does AoE damage from level 1, but it can also push enemies and items, and it deals damage. So, I just don't see a reason why you would not pick this spell. As you can see, you can use this to throw enemies off cliffs, therefore they take fall damage. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Definitely, definitely A tier. It could even go up to S tier when handled properly. You can throw a lot of enemies off cliffs, but there's also other ways in which you can do it, so it is replaceable. Up next is Witch Bolt. And which bolt while it does have some good dice and it can be used to drag invisible enemies you can also use fire fairy fire on that it can be twinned and it's good damage you don't have to roll for the damage as as long as you have the connection to the enemy once you've landed the attack once so let me show you what i mean if the enemy is wet they do take double damage Okay, maybe we can land it. Okay, and now we can use our subsequent turns, oh no, to, to attack. Not a great spell, C tier for me. Up next we have the Wrathful Smite. Now, Wrathful Smite frightens an enemy, yes, and that's a good effect, but it is concentration. So if you're concentrating on Shield of Faith, or bless with your paladin then you're gonna lose your concentration so because you're gonna lose your concentration while the effect is good it's b tier for me it could be even better if handled properly uh, but because of the concentration is not that desirable yeah and that's the level one spell list guys let me know if you like the video drop a subscribe drop a like of course obviously um let me know in the comments if you disagree with any of my decisions 
if I'm being unfair to some uh, spells. And if you would like to see the complete list, I'm gonna be try. I'm gonna try to get all of it by the end of the week. Um, but yeah, this spell. There's a lot of spells to cover in the game, but I'm gonna do my best. We already covered a big part, a big chunk of it. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.